Like, we lose a little bit of headshot weakness damage and a little bit of speed and stuff, but, like, having no health regen is kind of on the rough side. And even when I'm, yeah, set, oh. No, this does not, this counts as solid ground. So it's just when I'm like, whoa, whoa. okay, this isn't too bad. I can deal with this. It's just my ra arachnophobia acting up. Or not arachnophobia. It's a spider as the phobia symbol. So I was thinking arachnophobia when I saw the spider. But yeah, okay. I, I can deal with the fear of heights. So let's get us perk point in. That means we actually unlock the next tier. Um, what would actually be good? Faster walk speed, sprint speed, eh. More XP from companion kills, lower vendor prices. I mean, the vendor price is probably not a bad idea. It'll probably save me a lot over the course of the game, now that I actually have enough money to buy something. Uh, I don't actually want to decrease my armor, weapon, and durability loss, because I actually want to burst my uh, engineering skill up high enough that when I repair it has a chance of going pristine, so that's actually against it. Um, extra base armor rating. It's only plus five. Um, hmm. 10% armor rating bonus, though. Um, I'm trying to see if any of these things stack. Anything else look like a credit chip? Hmm. I wish I could get something outside of this tree, because this is none of these are, like, really all that super good. I mean, that will keep me alive a little bit better throughout the entire game. Let's see. What is my current armor rating? Aha! Uh -huh. My current armor rating is 150... No, that's how many uh, armor parts I have. My current armor rating is 50. So that's a 10% increase on this first planet, and it's going to only get worse. 20% is only going to get better. So that's the one that scales the best. All right, now we've unlocked the tier two tech trees for our next uh, level up. And we're now uh, afraid of heights. So that's a thing. Oh, I was not even looking when I clicked that. <laughs> like my brain's like, yeah, click accept. That seems like a good plan. Now, did we drop down from somewhere? Could I go see if that one guy's still alive up here? I kind of want to do everything I... Yeah, it was a drop down off a ledge, wasn't it? So, no going back to the starter area. Fair enough. Walk speed because you can't shoot and run. I mean, walk speed wouldn't be bad, ship? but... Oh, my star. You've been on my ship before. So handsome. Does she have a name yet? What's her drive model? Oh, gosh. <laughs> Listen to me babbling. When I was in Edgewater, I dreamed of flying on a real ship. Working on a real engine, belonging to a proper crew. Edgewater won't last another season without power, but that don't change the fact that I'm indentured to Spacer's Choice. Company expects me back at my post. Or you could become a space pirate. Those deserters left Edgewater behind, nothing keep you from doing the same. Never been on a ship before. Why are you telling me this? You've never been on a ship before? I've worked on the occasional supply coach in need of repairs. Once I built a little model craft out of spare parts, but Mr. Thompson found out and I had to take it apart. I want to ask you something. Yeah, I'm glad I took care of their power. No. But can I come with you? I could tend to your engine. I know my G-valves for my catalyzers and I can keep your ship singing. And if you ever need a pair of eyes watching your back, I can do that too. Uh, of course. Wait. Glad you have a long pick cabin. It's yours. You sure Reed won't mind you leaving with me? You just met me. Why would you want to go into space with a stranger? Um. I know. I know. Mr. Thompson said I was to chaperone you about the veil. Loan me out to you like I was Spacer's Choice property. Well, they may think I am, but I'm not. Yeah, yeah good Mr. for you. Yeah, Mr. Thompson's got a temper. But I'm more scared of missing out than I am of him. Yeah. I don't want to lose my one chance at seeing the stars. All right, why would you go to space with a stranger? Yeah, I've been thinking about that. 
I've had my misgivings about Miss McDevitt and the deserters, but... You took pity on them, and sent power to their garden, even though you knew Mr. Thompson would hate you for it. All this time, you've been determined to get your regulator back, get your ship up and running, and cut a path out of this place. And well, I want it. All right. You really want to Edgewater that badly? Not much of an Edgewater left to go back to. Yeah. My whole life's been small. I realized that when you walked into town. I've been seeing the same faces every day, the same sky, the same stars. Then I saw this ship. This gorgeous, stately lady with her eyes turned skyward, and... I made up my mind to come along with you. Pick a cabin, it's yours. Yes! I mean, thanks. You won't regret this, mister. It's Captain, captain. now. Oh. I can call you Captain now. Ha! <laughs> I got a captain. Parvati, you are just, like, the best NPC. Yeah, huh? Well, welcome on board. Mission to come aboard granted. Hey, finally Max is over here. Well, I certainly am looking forward to flying on a ship named the Unreliable. I'll just head upstairs and claim a room. All right, just go right on ahead. Don't ask permission or anything. By verity, by strength. What are we contemplating today? Who boy. Um, all right, um, let's start with the first one. Nothing too out of the ordinary. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Violently enthusiastic disposition. Uh, that's what my parents called it. I grew up in a pit of a town much like Edgewater. I was destined to be a laborer like my parents, but I was... Infected early with a need to solve the equation. My passion didn't sit well with them. All right. Uh, why were you so passionate about it? My parents, ironically. They internalized the precepts of scientism like no one I've ever known. They had a pure faith. A faith that brought joy to them regardless of the situation. I envied that. I wanted that peace. I thought if I became a vicar, I could find it. Or at the very least, find out why I lacked it. Weren't they proud when you became a vicar, at least? They thought I was fighting the plan. Should have accepted my lot. Some people pursue the clergy for power, prestige. But that was not me. Alright, you can't help but follow the plan. Everything you do is part of it, right? Tell me the plan again. The plan of yours sounds like a convenient way to control the masses. The plan is not one rigid path. There are a variety of multitudes contained within it. Our paths have variants, but we'll end up adhering to it, whether we like it or not. Some choices make the path smoother, some rougher. You can even go outside the lines, but the further outside you go, it's like an unbreakable elastic band. It will only stretch so far before it snaps back. The further it is stretched, the more violent the eventual correction. Huh. That's not too bad of a philosophy. All right. You seem quite trusting just to sign on. Um, let me see if I can get the other Nothing too out choices. Of I want to see what the just other ones are. Just your run-of-the-mill vicar with a violently enthusiastic disposition. Um, some things I don't understand about your religion. Convenient way to control the masses. This is probably going to upset him a little bit, but... It can be, if abused. But that can be said about anything. However, in the case of the board and Halcyon, sadly, I believe you are correct. Huh, I was not expecting that response. All right, um... No. Let's see. Tell me more about the plan. The simple version is this. The force which we call the Grand Architect created the universal equation that underlies and defines everything in the universe. Everything flows from the equation, or in layman's terms, the Grand Plan. Is the Grand Architect a consciousness? A natural force? Did it create the equation on purpose? The answers to these questions don't <laughs> really matter. The equation, the plan, is all that matters. 
Contentment is found by accepting one's role in the plan. Or riding the back and back rubber band whiplash. Convenient way to control the masses. The grand architect of the plan, what else do you believe? Scientism, as its name implies, believes that nature abhors equality. The strong survive and the weak perish for the betterment of the whole. Interesting. And religious reason, philosophy. Not emotion is the seat of all morality. Wisdom means accepting the vicissitudes of life with grace and dignity. Sounds like a cruel belief system. Now that's the reason I can get behind. <laughs> Screw the weak. It seems a little cruel. I prefer to think of it as looking at reality for what it truly is. That's a fair not point. How we'd like it to be. It's not an idealism. It's a realism situation. Yes. All right. Well, let, me, to... let me go down the last uh, things. Something I don't understand about your religion. Yes. Um. Every... The end. It can be if abused. Okay, that apparently is everything down that tech or dialogue tree. Quite trusting you to sign on without knowing anything about me. I have run headlong into too many walls in my pursuit of the truth. This book is my last hope, and you were my only hope of getting it translated. All right, fair enough. But the book doesn't have the answers you're looking for. I honestly don't know what I'd do. This quest has consumed me for the better part of my life. I fear there's nothing else left to me. What about you? Let me introduce you story? to the uh, the religion of lutology and our guiding principles of if it's not nailed down, it's free to take. And if you can pry up the nails, it's not nailed down. Those are it. That's the entirety of the philosophy. Carry as much as you can. The colonist on hope, a scientist named Wells saved me. Thrill seeker and lover of great renown. I love a good adventure story. Um... I mean, they're companions. Let's be honest with them. And how did he do that? Stole my buddy from the Hope at the edge of the colony and thawed me out. Well, you do seem different than every other colonist. Let's pretend for the moment I believe you. What are you going to do now? Wander around looting, looting some of the chemicals he needs, save the rest of the colonists. That seems a dangerous proposition. Why risk your life now that it's been returned to you? Had a family on Hope. My friends are on the Hope. I don't think we've ever had family, but my friends are on the Hope. That's probably true. Just because it's the right thing to do. Yeah, it's the right thing to do. That's a what we want to build. Attitude. All right. Um, tell me again about the book we picked up. Bokonu, the author, had some interesting theories about man's perception of reality that I thought could be applied to our attempts to decipher the plan. Unfortunately, he was also one of the founders of the Philosophist School of Thought, so the book is banned in this colony. All right, and what are philosophists? Philosophism's a false religion that stands in contradiction to almost everything we know to be true. They believe all is chaos, in stark contrast to OSI's belief in the plan. But most of the philosophist perversion of Bakonu's thoughts came more than a century after his death. All right, and where can we find someone who speaks French? I've been thinking on that. There's a former so uh, infamous philosopher scholar who fled Terra II some uh, years uh, ago. Uh. He's an expert on Bakonu. He's also who told me of the journal's presence in Emerald Vale. If anyone in this colony could translate that book, it would be him. So did you join both religions to decide to see which one was right, or...? Good, like, sounds a good lead. How about we find him? It's a bit like a long shot. What makes you so sure? Seriously, only one guy in the whole colony that can translate French? A former what now? You caught me. <laughs> Listen, the OSI frowns on fraternization with philosophists. I'd like to keep my associations with our scholar friend quiet. Sounds like a good... All right. Seriously, only one guy knows how to translate. The only one I'm aware of. I suppose we could always just ask random passers-by if they are fluent in it. And then show them a gigantic thing. Hey, I'm Captain here, only I get to be a smartass. <laughs> your sarcasm is duly noted and will be reflected in your review. Point taken. Sounds like a great idea. Uh, but I kind of want my companions to all be smartasses, too. Oh, uh, it's one or two. I don't know which one to get. Uh, um... Your sarcasm is duly noted to be reflected in your review. Sarcastic answer deserves a sarcastic response. A thousand pardons, my good captain. 
I thought we were engaging in witty repartee. Now, as far as tracking down this scholar, we should start on the Groundbreaker. It's where I'd go if I wanted to get off Terra 2. Great place to pick up a ride to Hephaestus, Scylla, even Monarch. All I All right. need is access to a data cartridge from the security terminal. Their easily hackable system keeps a registry of all crew manifests for both arrivals and departures. You've hacked it before. How is it that a simple hacker happens to be such a highly... Or, uh, Vicar seems to be a hacker. Before I transferred to Edgewater, I had a wealth of time to develop certain, uh, secular skills during my years serving a particular penitentiary flock. I meditated, led sermons, provided guidance to the inmates as needed, of course. I also played prison yard tossball and taught myself a bit about computronic security systems. Well then. How will the crew manifest help us track down your scholar friend? I'll comb the last six months of departure manifest to track the philosophist's off-world destination. All right. Sounds good. Thank you, Captain. You're doing the legwork. Hey, you were not dismissed. As always, I am at your disposal. What are we contemplating today? Um, talking about the personal quest. Of course. Are you ready to break into security on the Groundbreaker? We are still on the planet. If I can ask, yeah, yeah, that'll dating. give us dates, times, and the crew manifests for every registered ship. I'll comb the last six. Okay. Um. I find myself marveling at the complex simplicity of the Fibonacci spiral. I'm sure you know what that's like. It Something is pretty awesome to look at. Um. No, I wanted to be. I wanted to tell him I'm the only one who could be a smart ass because I guess that was the smart ass response. Bacon. No. All right, fine. Oh, before we do anything else, hey, 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 I, I, I want you to be my traveling. I could spend hours reflecting on the secret. Wo so, do I need to leave the ship to? Uh... Oh, I wanted to change his equipment before I forgot. But now we should have access to infinite storage lockers? No. Maybe we have to put the ship together. The Empty Man. Alright. Locate the security terminal. So we got his companion quest. Captain, I have detected that the town of Edgewater is now without power. I appreciate you doing your part to hasten their demise. Jeez. What can I do for you? No slack Captain? even from the computer. I have a power regulator. Do you know how to install a power regulator? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Outstanding, Captain. Your aptitude for engineering will prove invaluable in the event of another catastrophic engine failure. Our engine room is located behind you, across the cargo bay. Psst, her body. Lockers. Put this in for me. I don't know what I'm doing. Something you need? Nope, no further comments from you. All right. Let's find a... What armor suit has tech skills? Riot control is six. Makeshift low pressure. All right, let's see which one of these looks the best. Actually, no. Hold on. Do we want tech skills or do we want... We want stealth skills for a hacky build. Tech skills we want for engineering. Alright. Let's see. Um... It's not too bad. What other one had the tech skills? We have an exosuit. I like that one. That one's a nice one. I think we had a pristine... Nope, that's stealth skills. Here's tech skills. Oh, it's Pervati's suit. Um, looks okay. Let 
laboratory outfit. Ooh. We all lab coat fancy future techie. I mean, that wouldn't be a bad one for it. Oh, it doesn't have the ability to be socketed, though. All right, then. I guess, out of the ones that give tech skills, cobbled exosuit. I like this one. It's got cool shoulder pads where the riot one is more metally. Yeah. All right, we're going to make this our tech suit. Yeah, because we can't modify our hibernation suit. All right, and then for stealth skills, we have riot control armor. Um, rebuilt mining gear. I kind of like that one for our stealth because it has extra durability. Um, yeah, all right. So, we'll go and put our tech skills on. Which one did I decide it wanted to... Did I want? This one said the shoulder pads? Yep. Alright. So, we'll modify what we're wearing. Add a mod. Uh, I don't care about the toughens. Uh, I don't care about the stun. I want... Increases your tech skills. That's melee and defense, ranged weapon, dialogue. Okay, so we don't actually have one that increases our sneak yet, but so we'll do the tech one. All right, so now that it has the tech, that will allow us to tinker and repair even, even cheaper, because now it's tech plus 10. And I don't really need to tinker or repair anything else. So I guess that's as good as we're going to get for right now. Let's get our normal gear back on. And then we'll eventually get a stealth skill thing. Alright, enough distraction. We need to get going. To space! No can do. Sure. Anything to say about the engine room? Engine room. Not sure it's supposed to be on fire like that, but we're just going to leave and hope it doesn't burn everything down. All right, Ada. Let's book this place up. Captain. All systems are operating within acceptable parameters. I am prepared to bring the unreliable into low altitude orbit. This should prove an adequate test of our flight capabilities. Sweet. Let's get out of here. I like how we have like a little like rotor paddle or thing. I don't know if they're for stabilization or for communication, but it's kind of funny. Against all laws, the unreliable takes flight. I received a communication request from Dr. Phineas Wells. Ah, I've been waiting to be here from him. Aha, there you are. Hale and hearty and captain of your own ship. I see you're putting the unreliable to good use. Shame about her former captain. Horrible way to die. How are you feeling, by the way? I lost track of you in that cave back there. Experiencing any, uh, unnatural drippage? Perfectly normal side effect of thawing. I assure you. Uh -huh. I've been feeling a little lightheaded. Also, I can slow down time. Oh, that, yes, um, that's probably permanent. I wouldn't worry about it, though. I'm sure you're fine. What you saw in Emerald Vale is happening all across the colony. Food shortages, lack of supplies, and basic necessities. We're dying. The chairman, the minister, and all their lackeys on the board are to blame. The Hope has some of the brightest minds Earth ever sent us. If we can revive the Hope's colonists, they can help us undo the board's mistakes. They can help us set things right. Screw the companies. You need to get to stay yeah. away on Monarch. I have contacts there. They'll help me, help us, find the chemicals to revive your fellow colonists. Gladys Kelly, lovely woman, runs a cozy little black marketing outfit on the Groundbreaker. She can get you a nav key to land on Stellar Bay. All right. 
Like that, but with Gaius, what do we need a nav key to land on a planet? Slow down, so we can maybe get involved with the black market. Or I can put a couple light years between me and Halcyon. Can't I light s land somewhere outside Stellar Bay? Strictly speaking, Monarch is a moon, terraformed badly, and almost completely lawless. You'll love it. <laughs> Captains don't fly their own ships, you see. Your navigation terminal handles the, uh, you know, navigation. Think of a nav key as a set of flight instructions. The board's been confiscating nav keys for Stellar Bay, so we must rely on unconventional means of acquisition. Hence, Miss Gladys Kalkelly. All right. The Black Marketeer. Gladys and I have been doing business for years. Her smuggling credentials are unimpeachable. If anyone can get you a key to Monarch, it's her. All right. Sound like an idiot working with a criminal. What's stopping me from just leaving Halcyon altogether? Without a skip drive? Good luck. You'll be dead before you make it to the nearest star. Look, I admire your optimism, but the sad truth is you're stuck here. You, me, and the rest of this colony. We're all skating precariously around the edge of oblivion together. All right. Fair enough. None of us are leaving Halcyon alive, so we may as well make it a better place. And we can start by reviving the hope. All right. Go talk to Gladys. Excellent. I'll send her a wireless. Let her know you're coming. By the way, I gave Captain Hawthorne a disguise apparatus of my own design. Cutting-edge technology years ahead of its time. I call it the Holographic Shroud. I'm sure it will prove remarkably useful to you. You'll find it in the Captain's quarters. Sweet. I'll put it again. Alright, explain what it is. Marvelous device. I'm quite proud of myself. The Shroud changes the user's appearance to mimic that of another. It has limits. First generation technology, you see. But promising. Exciting to see it in use at last. Very simply, the holographic shroud uses biometric information contained on standard identity cartridges to generate a holographic projection around you. All right, this thing has limitations. People actually fall for this? Uh, let's leave about limitations. Only stands up to a casual scrutiny. Use it too long, bound to flicker, blur, something like that. Movement makes it more likely. Best used in moderation. When you see guards in your path, you can't sneak past, for example. Maintain your distance. Act normal. No running, no jumping. Don't draw their attention. If they pay attention, they're more likely to notice flaws in the hologram. All right. Fair enough. Seems far-fetched. Why do I need a gadget? Couldn't I just steal a uniform or something? <laughs> a change of clothes. What is this? Some old spy serial? Has 15 what, different armor sets in his inventory? Guard would be fooled by such a shabby disguise. The holographic shroud masks not only your clothes, but your face and fingerprints. It modulates your voice and sweetens your breath. So, don't use it to go into a place where they wouldn't expect sweet breath. Science, that's how. <laughs> okay, that's how it sweetens your breath. People fall for it? Ha 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 ha! The beauty is, they don't expect it. The Shroud is the only one of its kind. We humans have a tendency to overlook the unexpected. Activate the disguise, walk past someone. What do they see? A figure dressed like a fellow employee. Don't act odd. They won't focus on you. Alright. Excellent. I'll contact you once you've found a way to get to Stellar Bay. If you have any questions, come see me in my lab. And remember, don't trust the board. They'll try to win you over with promises of wealth and power, but it's a lie. The board's only interested in filling their own pockets. If we don't put a stop to them, they're going to run this colony to the ground. Transmission ended. If you are ready to depart, please select a destination on your navigation terminal. All right. Ah, this is the navigation terminal. Hey, okay, we see the world map. All right, so we have his lab, the Groundbreaker. We're here on Terra 2. An idyllic terrestrial planet. Halcyon's wealthiest elite live in its capital city, Byzantium, while the colony's laborers live in corporate-owned townships along the frontier. Oh, so Byzantium's here. I thought Byzantium was like homeworld back towards Earth. Okay, they keep mentioning it. Um, Halcyon's first colony ship, 
captain by Junle Tennyson and run by descendants of the original crew. Found an asteroid facility located in the rings of Terra 2, repurposed into experimental laboratory, living quarters, and hideout of Phineas Vernon Wells. Typhon. AG-642 Typhon, an uninhabited icy planetoid at the edge of the Halcyon system, has nothing to offer the Halcyon cow corp colony. Ooh, that's some, well, something cool there. Hephaestus, closest planet to the sun. Mining Corporation was set to establish outposts here, and as such has claimed it the planet for itself. Scilly is one of the largest asteroids ha orbiting Halcyon, the largest in a grouping of rocks known as the Cardibus. Cardibus? I'm, I know that is... Related to Greek or uh, Roman mythology. Or Greek or... Uh, what's the other one that's next to Greek? Yeah, it, it's some myth, ancient mythology. Cardibus, I've, I've heard the name before. Hephaestus Mining. I mean, Hephaestus and all the rest of these are pretty much the same thing as well. Um, Hephaestus Mining once claimed the asteroid, but its processing site was abandoned decades ago. Oh, I can go to Phineas' lab and meet him in person? Alright, that might be a stop on the way. Tartarus, named after its hellish atmosphere, Tartarus is where the board maintains the maximum security penal complex known as the Labyrinth. Ooh, seems like we're gonna be going there. Also, there's a, uh, there's a dot here. There's, there's, there's no planet. That seems suspicious to me. Treasure planet. Er... Eridanos, Halcyon's second Jovian gas giant. Its atmosphere is... Wait, second? Oh, that's the first giant, glass giant over here. Its atmosphere is rich with hydrogen, helium, and various noble gases. Distillation plants in the atmosphere harvest these gases for energy. Olympus, largest of the two gas planets, perpetual storms wreck the planet's atmosphere, rendering it uninhabitable. Monarch, one of Olympus's many satellites. What should have been Halcyon's second habitable world has long since been abandoned by the boar due to monstrous, ravenous creatures. Um... Cardibus is, was a giant maw in the ocean. I knew it was Greek. Thank you so much. And Scylla is a giant sea monster in Greek legends. Good to know. And he was making fun of the Hitman games about changing the costume. Okay, that makes sense. I, I figured he meant, like, making fun of most, uh, um, most disguise games. Welcome to system map. All right. Here you see all the planets in the system, as well as some special points of interest you may have discovered. You fly your ship to any location that you've unlocked, although some landing bays require special codes and keys before they land, allow you to land there. Moving between planets is considered extremely dangerous, and all employees are encouraged to remain home or at work. Alright, let me go get that shroud before we go anywhere. Also, ooh, ooh. Aha! We have access. Alright, this is going to be my junk locker. This is going to be my weapons locker. So, store... Store, 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 store. Uh, I'm going to keep this so I can put that on, uh, what's his face? Let's store one of these, because why not? Um, keep the, uh, I'm going to give the plasma rifle, I think, to, or we could give this old reliable to him. Plasma rifle, old reliable. I kind of want one of my, uh, NPCs would be like da 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 da. All right, and then I'll break these two down because I don't have any use for them. All right, no need to keep the hibernation suit on me. Um, that's a sneak. Uh, that's lockpick. That's hack. That's intimidate. So we don't need that. This is going to go on the vicar. Sneak. Um. I don't need handguns. So we got lockpick, we got hack. Determination we won't need. I don't need melee weapon skills. Already got a tech suit. Science falls under tech. And did we have a tech helmet? Oh, that's a hack one as well? Weight one pound, weight zero pounds. Um, let's keep the lighter one, then, if that's hack as well. Um, alright, that's a stealth suit. That's a tech suit, but not the one we're keeping. That's a melee. Ooh, that has actually extra armor. That's cool. Um, that's a tech suit. That's her suit. That's my tech suit. Alright, so we got a sneak helmet. A science helmet, a hack helmet, and a lockpick helmet. 
We got two sneak helmets. Um, one of those needs to be broken down. We've got a tech, a stealth suit, and my heavy armor. Cool. That is everything, I think. And then this locker. We will store all of our mods. Oh, look at our weight just plummet when we're getting rid of all this crap we don't need. These weigh something? Oh, they, that's seven pounds right there. Um, I'm going to store half of them. I'm going to store half of them again. 18 heals should be more than enough. If we get into more trouble than that, we can always come back to the ship. Um, that has no weight. That has no weight. Let me make sure. Yep, none of those had weight, so I'm going to take them all back. 57 pounds. Yep, all right, cool. No reason to ever get rid of those. Um, and this is some junk to sell, so we'll sell that on platform. Cool. Oh, I've got so much inventory capacity now. I can get 100 pounds worth of stuff. It is awesome. And then break down one of the duplicate face masks. Oh, that's so nice. Oh, did we have... Aha! We have Vicar Max. We have the ability to give him stuff. So, screw your telescoping staff. You now have electric hammer. Screw your sawed-off shotgun, even though that's a really, really good sawed-off shotgun. You are heavy daka daka. We have a sawed-off shot... Oops. Store the sawed-off shotgun and the hammer. Ooh, what did we just do? Damn it! Stop trying to take things. I want to put things in. This is interesting. Alright. And then we want to give him... <sighs> Crap. Ooh, dialogue skills. I will take that, sir. You can have... Let's see, what was our best armor? Uh, we didn't really have very many good armor suits. Um, this one it looks like for right now. And I will be glad to relieve you of that. All right, now you look like a proper adventurer. Have a helmet. All right, and you got to level up. So what's your abilities? 10 hack, straight off the bat. 20% combat dialogue, dialogue combat effect duration. Okay, so that's the cower. 20% science weapon. All right, let's get you your perks and your main skill, and then we'll work on giving you some other stuff. And mixed, medium, aggressive. Yep. Sweet. And more stuff in the codex that I'll never read. All right. Don't forget to tinker buff Max's weapons in armor. I'm gonna kind of just leave them with crappier stuff. They got infinite ammo and infinite durability, so I don't really need to make them that good. I think they're actually pretty tanky for right now. If it becomes an issue, I'll invest some money into it, but for now I'm just gonna keep raising up my engineering skills so I can do it for cheaper. Also, welcome, Voy. Glad you're able to join the stream. We got a robot named Sam. Nope, no response to the auto mechanical unit. A serial number etched in the chassis indicates includes the letter Sam. Leave it alone. Aw. What quest did we just get? The cleaning machine. Found a non-operational sanitation and maintenance auto mechanical on the unreliable. If you get it running, it may prove useful. Awesome. People have rooms and things. The modern steel wrench in you. Book is heavily dog-eared with doodles in the margins. She's got a spade. Banged up toolbox. Full of modified tools with unique mechanical usages. Digging around in here would be an easy way to lose a finger to a sawtooth blade. Aw, she keeps a little plant. Petunia the plant. This is not a petunia. Ha <laughs> ha. Aw, and it's her dad. 
Stern older man with warm eyes. Pavati's father. Aww. I'm not going to steal her stuff. Oh, we got here. Abigail! First wrench dad ever gave me. She's been a friend ever since. Oh, she's got her own case and everything. It's so cute. Anything else I can look at? Um, we have a bland room, so apparently that's another command. Okay, how many rooms do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five. So we can have five total companions. We've got a cool galley. I think I've already been in here before, and I think I've looted everything, but... <gasps> I've looted all of it. Raid in the fridge! Ah! I don't think I'm going to be eating salt tuna for a while. I'm going to stick to my apples, thank you. Index of banned literature. For official OSI eyes only, illegal to be viewed by unsanctioned individuals. Well, time to come to crime. Index of banned literature. Various qualifying considerations. Principal rules of restricted management. Morals, maxims of banning unethical literature. Proof of the Grand Architect and Predestination. A refunded... Refundation of the titles listed here within. Consequences, the mind and the will of man when led astray. Official list of banned titles. Prerequisites for advancing the investigation, outing, and penalizing of offenders. Damn. Oh, I saw anoint my vial. Smells suspiciously like iceberg aged whiskey. You keeping whiskey in your anointment vial? I gotta get you some better looking armor. It's a little yellow. It doesn't go well with you. Oh my god. Um, well. Ammo I will steal from you. Doctrinal studies of equality and equations. Textbooks have been out of print for almost half a century. Margins are filled with scribbled notes and many passages have been underlined. Some pages come loose, the glue is now yellowed and cracked along the spine. Scribblings of the, on these journal pages are un, utterly illegible to anyone except Vicar Maximilian de Soto. Toss all trading cards. In mint condition, most of these cards represent players from the Hephaestus, Hammers, and the Tilebackers. Oh, should I have been giving you those cards instead of selling them as junk? Oh yeah, with the robot we have six companions. Okay. Art and Science of Tossball. Impossible to put down. Order of Scientific Inquiry. Office of Literature. This endorsement has been approved. Auntie Cleo's darlings. Signed by <coughs> Seymour Whitlock, who held the record for the most on-field fatalities for three consecutive seasons. That is a hell of a sport. I hope to see it sometime. Now, do we still have all of our crazy items in the inventory? These are quest-related ones. Those are junk. Huh. Saltuna chunks packed in real seawater brine. May contain additional ingredients at no extra charge. Real Saltuna, real seawater, real good. Oh, wow. Alright, let's see what else. Oh, where's my bunk? Oh, wow, you guys all have to share one bathroom? I mean, I guess it's efficient on a spaceship, but... Hey, how's it going, Pravati? I could probably spend years fixing this boat, stem to stern. Think you learned your trade from your father? It sounded like it, sounded like it when you talked to Reed. It's time for you to move along. Whoa, no, not touching that one. Mostly, yeah. I lived in the maintenance office near all my life. Mr. Thompson never let me forget how funny that was. I don't see the humor. Reed seemed to have it in for you. You worked beside your father your whole life. That ever let you ever work on spaceships? I don't see the humor. He meant funny as in odd. Well, he was an asshole. It's not normal for anyone to do as their parents. You take a vocational test. That decides your schooling and your career. Ah, is it called when the I goat, perhaps? Everyone figured it was on account of my dad. They were real unhappy with us. But you're actually good at this, and you enjoy it. Why are people unhappy about you getting a maintenance job? One happy test determines your whole life. You're actually good at this, and you enjoy it. Well, I'm good at making things work the way they ought. Not so much at doing such to somebody else's schedule. There's times I'm working deep in the guts of a loader, getting it all running perfect. Then I look up to see it's tomorrow, and I've blown another deadline. <laughs> 
Anyhow, I, I was happy to get back home. I didn't care much for schooling. Dedicated to stream for three hours? Oh, I'm going to be streaming for longer than that when Sword and Shield comes out. I stream for as long as I, you know, am feeling good. Actually, I, my back has not been hurting me today, so apparently the new stuff at the uh, chiropractor has been helping. Because, yeah, it hasn't bothered me all that much to sit and stream for longer. Awesome. Thank you for pointing that out, because I wouldn't have noticed. After school, you made straight back to Edgewater. You didn't like your classes. Um, you didn't like your classes? There were a whole lot of reading, not nearly enough doing. Like, before they'd issue you a wrench, they wanted an essay on the design of different wrenches. Then there'd be quizzes on company regulations for storage and maintenance of wrenches. Ugh. What'd you do in your time off? As soon as I got permission, I spent all my time in the machine shop. They had all manner of parts, but they didn't want me using them, so I had to sneak them sometimes. You little thief. I even slept Good in Good looting. Had a hammock tied up in the rafters. Before I left, I installed a little skylight for myself so I could see the stars. Well, now you just look out your window. Didn't have your own room? Students bunk four to a room. It's supposed to get you used to working as a team. There's no privacy and no quiet. When my roommates tried to talk, I'd get so nervous I'd be drenched in sweat. It was easier for everybody when I stayed off on my own. I doubt any of them remember me now. Aww. Um, after school you moved straight back to Edgewater? Yep, nothing much had changed. Everything was a little grayer, a little dirtier. Dad met me at the shuttle and gave me a big ol' hug. I noticed straight away that he was moving slower. And stiffer. He made a little grunt when I squeezed. Aww. Sorry I shouldn't have brought it up. Did you get much time with him after you got back from school? He wasn't that old, was he? No, but a whole life taking care of Edgewater by his lonesome, working with all kinds of chemicals, it wears on a body. Mm -hmm. When I left for school, everything got harder for him. I used to help him lift the heavy things, and my hands didn't shake for the fine detail work. That's why her voice is familiar. Okay. Ashley Birch is the voice of Parvati, who was Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn and Chloe in Life is Strange. I was wondering, because it did sound a little bit familiar to me too, but I couldn't place it, so I didn't want to say anything, because I don't remember actor names. How much time with your father after we were back from school? About a year. I tried to do more of the work so he could rest. His heart gave him pains. Dad never said that he loved me, you know? I, I knew on account of him showing it. How he'd stay up late to help with my projects or listen to my fretting. Oh gosh, <laughs> look at the time. Sorry to bend your ear so long. And I got so much to do before this ship's in decent shape. Break time's over. Aw, but I want to give her a hug first. You're a good engineer and a good person. And you have looter's instincts. Can't ask for more in an NPC companion. Oh, look! My stats are reduced when I'm standing on boxes, because I'm afraid of heights. Where the hell was my room? Is it up this staircase? Aha! Captain's quarters. Oh. I think this is supposed to be my locker. Wah, wah. Oh, well, I've already got an organizational system set up, so. Also, Tiny Tina from Borderlands. Okay, okay, that Thanks one I get. Help, yeah. Captain. All right, let's look at my terminal. Messages for Alex Hawthorne. Alex Hawthorne's unread messages. Okay, I'm going to come back to that in a second. Let's get the holographic shroud up first. All right, protects the skies on you and your companions. That gives you access to restricted areas, provided you have the correct ID cartridge for the area. Strict areas are off-limits to unauthorized personnel and otherwise result in being attacked on sight. Alright. Wow, we got 20,000 experience for picking that up. Damn. Alright, let's take a look. Unread messages. Unread message list. From you, Bedford. Forgot to mention in my previous message, silly me, I'm mailing you a copy of my favorite serial, The Space Adventures of Singularity Steel. It's about a dashing space pirate with a heart of well steel. Not exactly board approved, so don't go showing it around your spacer buddies. 
I'm not exactly... Uh, I hope you amuse you while you're out adventuring. Any similarities to a certain someone are entirely intentional. Winky face, winky face. Udom. Um, Alright, good to know that we might not want to mention we were the one who killed Hawthorne. Wingman, Alex Wingman Hawthorne. Udom Wingman's Wingman Bedford. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's not good. Um... Hawthorne's archive messages. Oh boy, yeah, whoever this U Bedford is, uh, gonna be troublesome. Alright, dearest Alex, can't tell you how pleased I am to finally hear from you. Oh, your message was hilarious. I'm delighted by your sense of humor and the tale of your hijinks. Hope your terminal will cooperate for the foreseeable future. <clears throat> by the way, I was scraping Groundwater's comm network for tasty little tidbits, and I noticed you declined to dock at Edgewater's landing pad and instead touched down in the wilderness. You rugged individualist you. I only pray that idiot Thompson wasn't giving you any trouble. Anyway, I hope your meeting down in Terra 2 proves fruitful. I look forward to corresponding to you with greater regularity. Your best friend, Udom. Oh, no. We're totally going to be meeting this Bedford guy. Ah, uh, Or Udom? I don't know. Maybe woman? I, I do not know. Alex, I don't know where you were raised, but I... I hazard to guess it might have been a barn, because anyone, even with a modicum of decent rearing, would know it's unforgivably rude to ignore ardent, sincere message of one's friends. Best Udom, please respond. Oh no. Dear Alex, hello, hello. Hope this finds you well. It's a pleasure to see you in my office la again last week. Once again, I'm terribly sorry about impounding, impounding mix-up. How could it have happened a second time? Terminals these days, I swear. Dreadfully unreliable. Just like your ship. Yeah, I'm guessing that that's not... Wait, hold on. Is it nickname Wingman Wingman? Huh. So this one is a more familiar note. And he doesn't have his nickname on this one. Hope you're giving some thought to the thing we discussed. You know about the Wiles fellow? I'm so sorry to press, but I have the strangest taking feeling that you really do know him. If you could just tell me where he is, well, it'd be marvelous for our friendship, wouldn't it? Looking forward to see you again, Wingman Winky Face. Oh, boy. Alright. Dear Alex, A. Udom here, Udom Bedford. We met when I accidentally impounded your ship. My silly fat fingers embarrassed me once again. Hope that wasn't terribly inconvenient for you. It's such a pleasure to for me. I tremendously appreciate your forbearance and not throttling me. You really are quite the gentleman. If you're ever in Groundbreaker's airspace, well, ship space, or space space, please don't hesitate to look me up. Last hope serves Spectrum Vodka. Perhaps we could try every color. You know, really tie one on. Let me know your new friend, Udom. Okay, so Udom is on the Groundbreaker. That's gonna be awkward as crap. Um. Logs, alright. Viewing log entries. Log entry titled Shrink Ray. To myself, stop, remember this later. No, better, Ada, remind me weekly to check this log until I tell you to stop. Yes, I mean continually. No, Ada, not if I'm dead. Why would I even ha Why would you even ask me that? Uh oh. Back to the point. I saw in actuality, my, with my own two eyes, a supply me powerful weapon in Well's lab. It was sitting there for the taking. If the gray hair were to look away or forgot about it, maybe. Or if I had asked a smidgen more nicely. He called it a shrink ray, but wouldn't let me test the claim after I lost my temper. Said he was inspired to create the thing by the achievements of our other scientists who, who dared to push the boundaries of human knowledge and decency laws. I heard rumors of fantastical weapons like this one, weapons that push the boundaries of the mind and science's cutting edge. I figured they were just stories, to be honest. Laying eyes on Wells' shrink ray firsthand is enough to make a fellow wonder if there's more to the rumors. More to be had. Hammer power. Last, the last time, I got sloshed. I mean, I was imbibing at the last hope on the groundbreaker. Look, Udom really, was really free with the drinks. He seems like an okay fellow. Alright, it's a dude. I shamelessly, but subtly, eavesdropped on two mardets yammering about mad scientists some years back who claimed he'd made a huge discovery that would change the fate of the colony. Like, none of us had ever heard that one before. But, here is a good part. The Mardettes said the mad scientists kept yelling about Hammer's power or something similar. Strange weapon with a special power created by a crazy lab coat. Sure fits the bill. Could be another one of the weapons in inspired Wells. Black Market leads. Why, why, why? Why did, won't Wells just give the shrink ray to me? Blast him to the depths of Labyrinth and Tartarus and back. So let the record show I did apologize for shouting him down five times, but architect be damned, I'm just it's just sitting there, neglected and gathering dust. I should have commandeered it and thanked him without permission or without asking permission, 
or uh, breaking expensive equipment like when he said he was it wasn't ready yet and that even if it were he couldn't entrust it to me to someone like me what does that even mean I ask I'm not trustworthy enough that I'd use it to wipe out the good hard-working folks of a colony like some sort of moralist psycho I'll admit maintaining some questionable associations but I follow a strict code of me myself and mine what's not to respect in that exactly now I have to wait until Wells forgets or thinks he's misplaced it. In the meantime, I have been tracking down additional rumors pertaining to these, to other of these science weapons through Halcyon. If gossip holds true, my next stop will be check the black market merchants on the Groundbreaker and in Fallbrook. Oop. Search term Sam. Alright, first Sam result. Do not forget, he found a discarded sanitation and autom maintenance automechanical and emerald veil scrapyard. During your last job. It should not be too difficult to get it up and running. With a few key modifications, I can envision a combat-capable variant. Some might say a clean, mean killing machine. Should be fun. Ooh, that seems fun. Um. Removal of factory standard part Sud Steeper was successful. Delivery of combat modified replacement part Acid Steeper has been delayed. Progress sent back is estimated now to be a solid three months. Not like I have more pressing matters to attend to. Ah, but I do. Given up hope in the delivery, the part is lost in transit. It's not turning up anytime soon, but good news. Heard from a fellow who knows a gal who knows the broker who overcharged me for information regarding the location of an Acid Steeper I can er filch. The part was sent to an old storage facility on Roseway. I'm sure I'm I sure never thought I'd go back to that pit. Good thing Auntie abandoned it years ago. I'll pick it up following the next pit stop back to Emerald Vale. Wells wants me to chaperone some person of interest. Details to come later. Oops. Alright. Is there any no, that's everything. So we can if we go to Roseway, wherever that is. Ooh, that's beautiful. Uh we can pick up the there's a lot of asteroids and stuff in this space. Um, we can pick up an acid steeper and, I'm assuming, make a corrosive robot weapon. Fancy. Um, well, I think we're probably in a pretty good spot right now. We've got different things upgraded. we got some new... everything checked out on the ship. I don't know how close we... Are to leveling up anybody? Really wish it would tell you their experience. Um, yeah, bonus support engineering. Yep. Oh yeah, what's Vicar Max's ability? That's something I should probably check. Trick shot, knockdown, knocks the tar. Uh, Max examines and evaluates his target and spiritually enlightens them with a blast from his shotgun. Uh, knocks the target to the ground, making them unable to take any action for a short time. Lowers all skills a moderate amount, and target takes increased plasma, shock, corrosion, and ray damage. Damn. And gives me 10 hack. Alright. But yeah, I think this is a good place to save it, so hopefully you guys on YouTube have enjoyed. If you like if you did, subscribe for more. See you next time.